Very much. Let's just remain standing a moment for prayer. I always like to speak to the author before I open his book. Don't you think that's a good idea? Someone was talking one time. I said something or another, and, and the man said, uh, it was a fine friend of mine. Most all of you know him, and he preaches in seven languages. Booth Clibber, you've heard of him, I guess. William Booth Clibber. And um, he said to me, he said, but Brother Branham, you just don't know your Bible. I said, well, I know the author real well. <laughs> If I know the author, I think uh, he'll teach me his word. So let's speak to him now before we go into his word. Our Heavenly Father, the author uh, of this work, the author of the Word of God, the Word was God and made flesh and dwelt among us. We approach thee in the name of Jesus, thy Son, our Savior. We love him, Father, because that he was obedient unto death. The wrath that was supposed to come upon us was poured out upon him on Calvary. There he suffered in our stead that we might go free. No wonder people has never been able to express what love the Father had for the fallen race of Adam to give his son to suffer to redeem us by his grace. And Father, we pray tonight that you will bless us in our efforts tonight as we come to fellowship around the word. May the word be a lamp unto our feet, a light that will guide us deeper depths and higher heights in the love of God. And heal the sick tonight, Father. This is the night that we're to pray for the sick. We ask that you will heal every one of them. Bless this little church, O oh God. Bless its precious little pastor, Brother Montaigne, and his dear brother that I just met and shook hands with in Calcutta. I pray, Father, that you'll bless these boys and thank them their godly old father up there. And when he packed them around, his little boys, how maybe he believed that you would someday make ministers out of them like this. And we're happy, Lord. God answers prayer, we know. So answer ours tonight, Father, and get glory out of our gathering together. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. May be seated. This is such a grand privilege to assemble in service of God. And you know, about time we get all the funny feelings drove away, then it's about time to leave, you see. When we come in and just constantly and saying, how do you do? And then the ministry's all new and I'm new. And first thing you know, it takes a little while to get us all kind of acquainted with one another. Let the Holy Spirit move among us to see that we're brothers and sisters, you see, that there's nothing wrong with this, and we're just God's children. And um, the ministry that God gave me, why, it's for me, and it's love, expressions of love. And then we say bye-bye and take off up to somewhere else. And I've tried, I can't think of that name of that place. I call it, Billy said, where do you think we're going, Daddy? I said, Vince <laughs> well, That'd be a long ways away, wouldn't it? But however, we've been at Vince Away. I've been over. We never had services there. But, but uh, we're expecting the Lord willing. I met my good friend, Brother Cop, back there. And uh, one invited us back to California again. And, and then uh, in different places uh, around the nations. And we've got to finish up all of our interviews. It, it, how we do that, the pastor was saying something the other day. How them interviews that we talked about. Well, there's, there's things in people's lives that they don't know which way to go. They're just, they're just at the end of the road, that's all. They don't know. I believe that the Word of God solves everything that we have need of. Don't you believe it? That's right. But now, for instance, if it says something about salvation, then the Word of God explains it. Now, but what if it's something that the Word of God hasn't got written here? Then God don't leave nothing. He sends us different gifts to take care of that. And then... In the Old Testament, we, the Lord give us man that they would go to and consult them and ask about what was to take place. And um, they were brought up from baby on up and had the word of the Lord. And they felt assured that if this seer could see what the Lord said to them, well, that, that, was, the, that was it. Well, I'm not a seer. I'm not a prophet. But I, I'm just a poor Gentile that the Lord lets me be used to help the Gentile people in these days, you see. I believe it's uh, 
regarded somewhere in the Bible as some sort of a gift of whatever it is that it's a small and that ain't the significance of it. It's what we can do to help somebody to get closer to God. And the um, way we do the people write in home and then we get their addresses and then sign a name and send them back a card and anywhere in that community, in that community, then we send them word who, who to come. Well then during the time of the day, like here the reason many of you didn't know why we wasn't having these discernment services every night, why the daytime takes it all out, see, and you're so weak and tired that you can't do it at night. And um, so we, the people comes in and sits down. I don't know who they are, don't ask them. And we just wait there until the Holy Spirit comes and brings the whole thing out. Tells them what they have done, where they made their mistake, what they're supposed to do, and, and everything just the way it's... Um, and you'd be surprised, doctors, lawyers, businessmen, and everything from all over the country, from Africa, from Asia, from Germany, from Switzerland, uh, they come from all over the country. Sit in there waiting months and everything else, and we just write them. Instead of all of them piling up there and many of them go home disappointed, we just wait till their time comes and then we bring them in. Now in California here we had meetings. And here some people have been waiting as much as three years or more. And then as soon as we can get to them, we don't leave. We stay right there until the Holy Spirit speaks. And then they know what to do and tell them how to do it and the way it is. And it never has failed one time because it's God. We're thankful for that, very grateful to our Heavenly Father that, and ministers by the hundreds. So we, um, we have a room we take them to, and they know when their appointment is it's exactly when it is, and it's, we come just... Now, sometimes I'll be out walking around or maybe in prayer for somebody else, and he'll show me a vision on where to go to find somebody or do something, and I take right off and do that right now because that's God himself speaking, using it. See? So I always do just as try to do as he tells me. I'm sorry to say I fail him so many times. I, I'm ashamed of myself before his church tonight to make a confession like this, but there's many times that, that I have failed him, and I, you pray for me, that I, and I won't fail him no more than humanly possible. Uh, many times I know if I'd have went and done certain things, it'd have been different. But just somebody pulling at you this way and somebody pulling this way and and it's so hard and good friends that you love real well and, and sometimes you get out of the will of the Lord. After all, it's kind of a dual ministry. This is evangelistic ministry. That other, remember how the old seers did? They stayed out in the wilderness. Stayed out there until God told them to do something. They stomp right in, deliver their message and tuck back to the wilderness again. See? And that's the difference of it. Now, but we're so glad to know that our Heavenly Father of the Old Testament, the same one that was in Jesus Christ, His Son, is the same one in His church today. See? Oh, doesn't that just thrill your heart? To know that in the day that when it's so much, they say, well, the different organizations says, we've got to come over here. The different nations say, we've got to come over here. But He's the one who's got it. <laughs> so we're just so glad that He comes down and proves us by the Bible just what He's going to do and come down and do just what He said He would do. And look back here in the Bible and see it is page by page unfolding like He said He would do. Wonderful. Wonderful. How many got the businessman's voice this time? The businessman's voice. I uh, appreciate that little article, that vision. He put part of it in there, which is very nice. That I suppose was wrote up by Brother Tommy Hicks. Uh, that that made a change in me. I was always afraid of death. I thought I would didn't want to be a spirit. I I never know nothing. That's the reason that the angel of the Lord who speaks to me I know is of God, because he had first place. If he tell me one thing that wasn't God's word, I would not believe it. No, sir. I don't care what it is. It's got to be God's word. Think. Uh, there's all kinds of angels, you know. We know that. But the, Paul said, if an angel come and preaches any other gospel than this that I preach. See? And when I got there and this little, I don't know, I don't want to say it, impersonate the great St. Paul, certainly not. I wouldn't do that for nothing. I don't know. It was probably a vision. But um, there's one thing I know, I wasn't asleep. And, uh, and if it was a vision, I never had one like that before in my life. I was just baptized and pilasters or rafters, what you call it there, the ceiling tiles there. I just about, ah, looking right back at myself, and just as much as I am standing right here. 
looking right back and I could see myself laying there. I had a real funny feeling. I thought I'd had a heart attack and a die. And I thought, well, if this is dead, my, this is wonderful. And I, I tell you Christians right now, you do not have one thing to wear if you're in Christ. Don't ever fear death. Death has no fear to it. No, no, no. It's a joy. And I met them women there. And honestly, I, I feel sometimes I've been a little hard on my sisters. I, not, not to try to be cruel, but I, I don't want them to be like the rest of the world. I'm, I'm jealous of them. <laughs> See? I, just, I, I want them to be real Christians. I want them to look like it, act like it, and be like it, and be genuine. I, and that's the reason I'm zealous of my brethren. I don't want them off of little old social gospels like you get out of some incubator out here. I want to be a real man of God standing and not compromise on that word and really lay it out there. That's, that's, and only I try to hurt my brethren. I, I love them too much for that. I love people too much for that. But really love cuts. Did you know that? Now, mother, I want to ask you something. Or daughter that's not mother yet. If, if your mother or your child was out here in the street and you know them little renegades running through that street and them half drunk and everything, that kid is going to get killed and it wouldn't stay out of the street. Would you say, well, darling, just go ahead and sit out in the street. I guess that'll be all right. Not the re- You wouldn't love that baby if you acted like that. Real love would get out there and you'd put it on such discipline and spank it till it did stay out of that street. Is that right? Now, don't get angry at me. See? <laughs> Just want you to stay away from the things of the world. That's it. Just stay away from it. Get away from it. Now, organizations, you hear me splank at them once in a while. Now, that, I don't mean to say the organization's not all right. No, sir. But you see, you get this to a place and say, I belong to the church of God. I belong to the assembly. That's just the same as you used to make fun of the Methodists saying that. And the Baptists and Presbyterians. And we got right in the same rut. Well, that's all right. Methodists is all right. Baptists is all right. Assemblies of God, Church of God, that's all all right. But, brother, when you see, no matter where it is, now, spiritual-minded people, I hope you understand, you will watch that the first thing you know, just like the first round of the apostles, they were all spirit-filled. The second round, they begin to give away. The third round, give away again. And in the fourth round, they went right on out into paganism. And then Romanism and paganism and... Christianity and all consolidated together and made a universal church. From there, see, that's the same thing. Martin Luther had a real revival. When Luther's living, he kept it straight. Do you know Martin Luther spoke in tongues? Yes, sir. Sure did. And he had great signs and wonders. But when Luther died, what taking place? The church organized and there she went. Another round come up to the incubator and all the way they went. Now, see, Martin Luther... He had to see the great pillar of fire, and he followed it. And but what did he do? What did they do? They organized right under this pillar of fire, and you can't organize the God. So the pillar of fire moved, and Luther couldn't move with it, because he was organized. Then John Wesley saw it, and away he went on sanctification. And what did he do after the days of Wesley? They organized it. And what did he do then when the Baptist, and it moved out again, the Baptist and the Holy Ghost, and the Pentecostals saw it, and away they went. After what they do, the same thing the rest of them done. Organized right under. After the first round of the old fathers about 40, 50 years ago, these young fellows come in, then the young fellows and the grandchildren begin to come. <laughs> there you are. See, right back the same thing. But remember, brother, that message is supposed to shake the nation or shake the church. Don't you look for some great something to come down on Carter's. The message of God will be exactly to the elected church. These signs and wonders will never be done before the world. They're not supposed to be. Uh, president of the Four Rolls Whiskey Company. His wife was she's uh, a missionary alliance, and she was in one of the meetings. She called Brother Bosworth, which was a missionary alliance, and said, "The thing of it is, you're not letting that gift get started out." Said, "What I seen last night would be done in the capitals and so forth of the nation. Why well, I said it would convert, bring the whole world to Christianity." But you see, it's not sent to capitals of nations. See, it's sent to the elected church. You see, you're not. Or they say, put your name on great big signs, hit the big nerve centers, get on television. It wasn't meant for that. I was just sent to you, the church. That's it. Now, you believe it with all your heart. I want to stay here while I'm in the church. This has certainly been a wonderful time for us. We appreciate Brother Buntain and to the co-workers, brethren, all you people, and especially you people. 
Why, non-healing services, just coming and standing here and plowing away and just letting it fall anywhere it wants to, and uh, but just staying true to the Word. I haven't said one word that I back up on, and I haven't said one word that the Bible doesn't say. That's right, or can prove it by the Scripture. So it's been right with the Word, and the blessed Holy Spirit's come right along all the time, confirming the Word right along just as likely. And you dear people has come every night and packed this place out and come right along. I appreciate that. That's really nice. I pray that not one of you will be lost. Every one of you will be in the kingdom of God. And I pray. I pray that this revival will never end in this little assembly of God church here on the corner. I pray that the light and power of God will spread from this till it takes the whole west coast. And I, I trust that this will be a church of example. I do. And other assemblies of God and Baptists and Methodists and everywhere just catch a fire everywhere. See, brother, we are not divided. We, we cannot be divided. We're human beings. You know, Methodists eat the same kind of food you do. Baptists does the same thing. Catholics love their children just like you love yours. Catholic men love their wives like you love your wives. And the husbands, wives love one another. They want to go to heaven the same as you do, see? So our little differences, I, let, let's forget that. Let's reach out an arm for everybody. Just reach out and pull in and love to the kingdom of God. You notice what he told me? I've always believed and always believed that that power of love exceeds speaking in tongues. It exceeds shouting. It exceeds everything that I know of. It's always been my theme. Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more. Yeah, yeah. Ever since by faith I saw that stream, thy flowing wound supplies, redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. Then if I truly love the church of God, which Christ purchased with his own blood, how can I hold my peace and see it getting worthy? I can't do it. I just can't, brother. If my brother turn me out, I, I just can't help it. See, but I, I must stay true to this work. It's, it's, my, it's my work. Now, we're going to have a prayer line tonight and pray for the sick. And so I'm sure uh, that would be a good way for a closing of the service here in the church. And they tell me that uh, they give me a, a love offering here at the church. Well, now, I, I didn't ask for that, friends. I didn't come here for that. I come for a fellowship with you and with your little pastor here. Uh, that's what I come for. Not an offering. If you never give one red cent, you'd, I'd be just the same. I, I appreciate it just the same. And it's not worth I have never in my life, i uh, 51 years old. I've been preaching the gospel for 31 years. I pastored the Baptist Tabernacle. 17 years and never took an offering in my life. Never in my life. I pastored 17 years in the Baptist church there at Jeffersonville, Indiana and never even had a collection plate in the church. Right. Not because that they wouldn't do it, because I was able to work, so I just went out and worked. Hard work, too. Walking 30, 35 miles a day, patrolling and things like that through the wilderness and working on high lines and whatever more come along to work. Make my living. I was no burden to the people. I love the Lord. That's it. See, it's not money. It's not them things. It's to, it's to try to get the church of God and all of us together to go up that great rapture. I'm watching the end. That's what I'm watching. As I told you about riding a bicycle. If you're looking here what's going on now, you'll, you'll certainly run off the board. But if you just keep your eye on the end and hold steady, just keep watching the end, see, you won't get so nervous. Oh, how's this going to be? How's that going to be? When I come into a meeting, sometimes I notice my boys, I call them, my group, they'll come in, Brother Brandon, this one. I just keep watching the cross. <laughs> just keep going out. It'll be all right. It's all right. It's never failed yet, so it just won't fail. That's all. God promised it, and it can not fail. God said so. And so we love him for that. Now, we're going to read a scripture and just have a little a little few words tonight and tomorrow night now we're going to be down at the municipal auditorium and um, I'm sorry that um, that we made this little uh, junction right quick the way we did uh, change rather uh, I uh, think the brother some of them thought that maybe it would give the people more room so they could attend the church and uh, I hope that no one that goes to these fine churches around here 
Well, we'll miss their services tomorrow night. I, I hope they don't do it. If they got a post of duty, stand at that. As you stand to your post of duty at your church, wherever you go to and pay your tithing into it, and you love your pastor and pray for him. And if you need to be prayed for, ask him. He's a man of God. He'll pray for you. And he'll answer his prayer, same as he will mine or anyone else's, because after all, it's your own faith in God that does the work. That's right. Amen. Just the doctor. Now, all of you be good, and God ever be with you, and I hope to be back on the coast here again. Visit down through here again at this little assembly of God. Come Amen. up and knock on the door. I hope you let me in. And I come in and preach for you again, and we have a little time of fellowship around. And you tell your pastors and so forth around, you visit around, give them my love and regards, and try to explain to him what I'm trying to do, is trying to hold the church of the living God together as one unit, one big body. I love that song, we are not divided, all one body we, one in hope and doctrine, one in charity, onward Christian soldiers marching at the war. And now, um, the prayer cards will be given out tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at the Municipal Auditorium. And now, all of those, the reason we do that, there's too many crowds in it, and they go to shove and push and once, and I was here first, you know how to do You just can't do it. You have to give them a card. And the card hasn't got nothing but just a little number on it, so you just keep your number. And um, when your number's called, come up. Now, I think that's all I was going to say for tonight, and I, I've told, and the musicians, uh, the song, the choir, and all of them, I appreciate them, everyone. And that uh, group that sang this morning, what, the choir, choir, ah, oh, they were wonderful singers. Yeah. And that little lady up there sang, she was a sweet little lady, a little, looked like a little Norwegian to me, because oh, she's here, and she isn't, I ain't got no hair to pull, so, you know. I was combing my three or four I had left the other day, and my wife said to me, she said, Billy, you know you're almost bald-headed. I said, but I haven't lost any of them. She said, what? And I said, I haven't lost any of them. She said, pray tell me where they are. I said, you tell me where they was before I got them. <laughs> That's right. They are a substance. Is that right? So everywhere they were before I got them, they are there waiting for me to come to them. <laughs> So when somebody tells you Brother Branham's dead, don't you believe it? I died years ago, see? I'm just going to that young body out here. When this old carcass is finished, I'll drop and rise, seize the everlasting prize, and shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell. Sweet hour of prayer. Well, that is true, isn't it? Yeah. It is true. See, you, it, them hairs were something. They were bound to be a substance. They were somewhere. Well, I ever thought that one time, I'm a great believer, I'm shoot, you know, I did rifles and so forth, and people give me guns, and I fool with them. Gene and I here, we just have a, relax ourselves, shooting targets, and, and I can take um, a 220 Swiss, that's one of the fastest firing guns in the shoulder, and can load that, hand load that to 5,000 feet per second. I think of it, see? But if you put just a one quarter of a grain more powder in it, you can shoot right across to that window. And you never hit the wind. And the nothing falls. The bullet turns right back to its original gases like it was millions of years ago. Now, see, it was gases, then it became something, and if it lasts long enough, it could come right back to a bullet again. See? That's what it is, see? It's our, what I, these hairs was before they become all me, they are waiting for me, and every hair is numbered. And not one bit of us will be lost, but I'll raise it up at the last day, saith God. I believe that just as true as I believe I'm standing right here. We're only made out of 16 elements. That's petroleum, potash, uh, cosmic light, and so forth. So uh, that God gets it's in the earth, and he'll just call it again, and I'll answer. That's right. I believe that. I believe that with all that's in my heart and soul and mind. I solemnly believe it, or this Bible. If I die over it the next two minutes, I believe that, that he'll call, and not one thing that I, that I was when I was 20 years old but what I'll be there. That's right. Only in marvel. I won't have to die no more. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Think of the old people and that vision when I was there. I've seen that woman, the most beautiful women i ever seen, long hair at her waist and long skirts on, run up, throwing their arms around me, call me brother. I've seen man and their 
see this whitest pearl her eyes glistening, run up and throw in her arms around me, call me brother, all of them young. And I couldn't understand it. And he said, you see that woman that just put her arms around you? Yeah. Said she was past 90 when you led her to Christ. Why wouldn't she call you her darling brother? That makes me press on. Oh, my. You see why I cut and pull? Come on, let's go, friend. Down in my heart, a whole many secrets. You know that. You absolutely know that. So you just have to trust me and believe me. I'll never leave the Word. I'll stay right with the Word. But you just measure right up to it now. And when you come back here, when you come back to church, come and if I come, Lord, let us live in Jesus' hairs the year from the day I come back, I hope to see this crowd here just shining for the glory of God and the power of God. And say, you know what? Every assembly of God, every church of God, every four square, every oneness, twoness, threeness, and fourness, and all up and down the coast are just one of card in this revival and the power of God is shaking this coast like it never did. Oh, I'd say, Lord, let thy servant depart in peace for my eyes to see thy salvation. That's right. I'd be ready to go. If you're keeping the scriptures down, you're so lovely. Billy tells me, he said, Daddy, you talk longer than you preach. He said, well, I said, I got something to talk about. <laughs> and uh, something that's good, something that I like real well, and I know we all enjoy it, don't we? T- talking to, to one another. Now... I want to, got some scriptures wrote down here tonight also, I may refer to them. And uh, I want you to turn over to Jeremiah 8.22, and we will read these, uh, ver- these verses. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why, then, is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered? That's a question. Keep that on your heart. Question. Is there no bomb? Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Then why is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered? If there's no bomb, and no physician, if there is, then why, why is she not recovered? There's a question. I believe if God makes a provision and a way of escape for his people, does something for his people, and then the people refuse to receive it, he's got a right to ask why. What if you did something for somebody, if you say, now I'll give you my automobile, it's full of gasoline, it's a good running shape, I want you to pick me up on the corner in ten minutes, and you wait all day and night, the person never does come, and you meet him somewhere, you've got a right to say, why didn't you do it? Is that right? And God in all ages, when he made, he's never made a way of escape that the people in full would take it. They've always been those who pulled away. But I want you to notice one great thing, that always God sends mercy and judgment follows mercy. And when you... If you do not accept mercy, then you must receive judgment. You believe that? Now, if you notice, just before the First World War, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this country and other countries. See? Now, when we've seen the greatest thing, the greatest revival, the greatest ministries that's ever been known since the days of Jesus Christ has crossed this nation. Tell me when, where, or about did we ever, ever read in a book or hear or even know of ministries like we have today. Now what's going to follow it? Judgment. To reject it. Look at the ministry of our Lord. Because they rejected it we had in the service last night. By rejecting it, what happened? Judgment followed Certainly, always, because they, look, the Holy Spirit fell in Russia about a hundred years ago. Did you know that? Certainly it did. They rejected it. What did they get? It fell in Germany before it fell here. What did they get? They wouldn't accept the cross, so they got a double cross, a swastika. And uh, because that we turned down as a nation, and I truly believe we made a fatal mistake in 56. And when we, I remember, I've got it on record. 
See? And you just remember, she'll never come back again. She's finished. That's right, we're gleaning. But it'll never come back again. There'll never be a great revival sweep this nation before judgment. She's coming to judgment. It's on its road there now. Most any time it will arrive. I do myself believe that before this great judgment strikes the nation, that the second coming of Jesus will take his church from the earth. I believe. Now we know that the world cannot stand an atomic blast. God has made a way for us to escape it. But if we refuse to escape it, then he's going to ask, why didn't we take it? Now, he's done everything that he promised in the Bible. Now, many people, I'm not different with the scholars, no, sir. But I only work by revelation. The revelation has to be the Word. If it isn't according to the Word, then it's the wrong revelation. Many are looking for great things to happen, and they're applying that over into Israel and not in the church. Take the first three chapters of Revelations, and you've got the church right there. Then John was called up from the church age. Now, so our day is just about finished, the church. The gospel will now return to the Jews in Palestine. And then the Gentile age is finished. As far as it is the church age, the real spirit-filled church. God makes a way, and then the people doesn't walk in it. He says, why? One time the king of Israel... Because one day he was walking out in his lattice uh, of his porch and he fell through the lattice and he, it hurt him. He'd taken a disease and a sickness from him. And so he took his bed. And being the king of Israel, yet instead of sending the inquire of God, he sent some of his men up to uh, Achern to require of Balaam, Beelzebub. The gods up there, their prophets, whether he was going to get well or not. Now, you know, God reveals his secrets to his prophets. We know that. To his servants. He reveals that. And Elijah was probably back over in his cave. And how did he know that the king pulled these men in, took two or three men and said, commissioned them and said, now you go over across our nation, take you several days. And go down to Akron, and when you get down there, there will be, you'll meet uh, uh, Baal, the, uh, the god of, of Akron, and then I, you inquire of his prophet to ask Balaam if I'm going to get well or not. But you know, being that he was an Israelite, then God revealed it to Elijah, the prophet. And he said, go up and stand in the way and stop him. And so these soldiers, our temple guards, came by, walking down the road, talking with the strict commission to go up to consult the heathen god about this, because all the nation had went into sin. And that's what's the matter today. All the nation goes into sin. Whiskey joints. The people getting cold and formal. To uncensored radio programs. Uncensored television program. And it's so fascinating and sin is so beautiful until it attracts the tensions of the people. And if they're not truly born again, where well, their attraction is on Christ and single-minded, they'll go after that stuff. They'll act like those people. And the, the spirit of that will get on them. Used to be the old Pentecostals wouldn't let their children even go to picture shows. The devil pulled one over on their eyes. He brought the picture show right in the house. And so you see how he got it? Slick, wise, slimy as he can be. Don't you never underestimate him. You stay on the cross. It's the only place to stay for safety. So the old timers, you see, they stayed with God. This prophet stayed with God so God could speak to him. Usually the people go like the nation goes. Always have. And that's what's the matter today. The people go like the nation goes. If it's all right, the nation legalizes drinking, well, it's all right. If they legalize... I've seen a lady walking on the street the other day that any cop that had any decency about him would have run that girl off the street the way she is dressed. I've never seen anything so vulgar in all my life. 
People running out of the filling stations and things gawking down the street at this girl. What in the world has become of the decency of our people? God respected a woman to be one of the jewels of the earth. And how she'll sell herself out to the, the devil is more than... Well, it's because she doesn't know God. That's just all there is to it. See? Know that her body is sacred and she shouldn't do that. And they do it anyhow because they think it's fine. Ricky and Elvis and all them, they just glamour at and wolf whistles. And they enjoy that. That ought to be a disgrace to any woman would have one of them whistles at her like that. Yes, you're a lamb. You're supposed to be. Some man's sweetheart and wife. Some baby's mother. You ought to be ashamed to do things like that. The decency of real womanhood ought to... The, the respect you had for your mother ought to lead you different from that. Right. Notice how that it's just become... And preachers just let down, let it come right in the church. Finally, just gradually seeping in a little bit like this. I sat and talked to an old Methodist preacher not long ago. He used to sing a song. We let down the bars. We let down the bars. We compromised with sin. We let down the bars. The sheep got out. But how did the goats get in? Well, I think his song really expresses it. You let down the bars. So, just let down the bars. One come in and he begin to talk it this way, and, and they begin to look and he prospered a little bit. And I said, well, if Jones can do it, Dr. Jones, I can too. And first thing you know, there it goes. And it's just like the old toboggan slide. You strip around on you. How many remember the old toboggan slide? You sit down and keep slipping around real easy, seeing how close you get to the age and all before you do it, down you went. That's what's happened to the Pentecostal church. Right. Don't see how close you can get to it. See how far you stay away. Yeah. One time there was a driver who had to ascend the mountain. And a man had to hurry and get across the mountains. And so he said, one driver walked up. He said, I'm such a perfect driver. I can drive these six head of horses in my carriage within six inches of that rim across that great thousand foot ledge. I can drive within six inches at a full gallop and never fall. And the other driver stepped up and said, Sir, let me take it. I can drive within four inches of it at a full gallop and never, and never fall. And there's an old fellow just standing over looking. The, driver, the man wanted to go across the mountain and said, What about you, sir? He said, Well, look, mister. Ah, according to what they're talking, they're better drivers than I am. I'll hug the wall. I don't take any chances. He said, You take me across. <laughs> Don't see how close you can get to sin without sin and see how far you stay away from it. That's the way it is. Keep off the territory altogether. That's the way I want a church. That's the church I want to belong to. One that shuns the very appearance of sin. Get away from it. Say, well, our girls or our men or our, they just have a little clean fun. Oh, my, my, clean fun. What Americans call clean fun. <laughs> I was up in Canada not long ago with my good friend Fred Softman sitting there. Uh, one of the great American, I ain't going to call the name of this group, so they're up there having a, a convention and whiskey bottles piled all over everything. When I come in that night, started up the, the uh, got on the elevator, and that boy, it even made me ashamed I was American. And it looked there, and I, I said, what's the matter? He said, the Americans are in the night. And I said, my, that's a Saskatoon. And I said, it's some lodge having their convention, and so when I got up there and got off the hall and my room started down, there was two young ladies standing back there. Both of them with wedding bands on with their just their underneath skirt on. Drunk as they could be. An old drunk man kind of reached out there and maybe a husband home baby say. Maybe these men reaching out to these young women and their wives home take care of a baby. But they were having a little clean American fun. Kill and sin! <laughs> Right. And they come down the hall, and this old guy grabbed this one by the underneath skirt and tried to pull her and almost broke one of the straps off the shoulder, and she was disposed terribly. She come down, beautiful young women, both of them, come down through there, staggering like that, and I just stepped back in a little room, like a little hall like this, and watched. They got pretty close in front of me, and they had a bottle of whiskey, and she reached down, tucked this bottle, and turned it up and tuck another drink, that wedding band shining on her hand. My heart just went out of me. And I thought, a beautiful little thing like that. And then look what she's doing. And then the other pastor, she tucked, she tucked this little skirt 
what she had on her underneath skirt, pulled it way up as far as she could, and hollered, Whoopee! This is life. I stepped out of the hall. I said, I beg your pardon, this is death. <laughs> this is death. The Bible said, She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she's alive. Amen. They said, Have a drink. I said, Just a minute. I'm an American. Good. He said, an old Yankee. I said, wait a minute. I'm a gospel preacher. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? I said. What about the Sunday school teacher? I said, aren't you ashamed of yourself? And I caught her by the hand. She's too little to run. I held her. Church screaming and pulling like that. And I thought maybe they'd come out and have me arrested and think wrong with me. So I said, aren't you ashamed of yourself as women up here? Both of you were wearing bands on and your husband's at home. So we're just having a little clean fun. I said, it's sin. Right. God made a way of escape, but they just won't take it. Why makes people do that? It's because God made a man to thirst. And you, how dare any man to try to satisfy that holy thirst with the things of the devil? If you try to do that, You'll never be satisfied. It only brings heartaches. Make you take a pistol and blow your brains out. That don't have real life in it. Real life comes from God. You can never be satisfied and perfectly happy. Uh, and one of these halfway Christians supposed to be the most miserable person in the world. Oh, I can't do this. My church knows I did that. God knows you're doing it. What difference does it make? Right there, have your whole heart centered right on God and stay right with it. Then you're happy, walking peacefully with Him. Elijah went up, stood in the road. Here come these men up and said, come to him, he said, Go back and tell your king, thus saith the Lord. He's not coming off of that bed. Asked him, why didn't he send down here? He's the Israelite. Is it because there's no God in Israel? Is it because we don't have a prophet? Israel doesn't have a prophet nor a God? Why would you stand over there to Akron? Hasn't Israel got a prophet? Hasn't Israel got a God? And why would you stand to Beelzebub or to, or to Balaam? Why would you consult those things? Is it because we don't have any prophet or any God? That's what God's going to ask in the United States one of these days. Why did you do those things? That's what God's going to ask the Pentecostal church one of these days. Why did you go to dances? Why did you act like that? Why did the women bob off their hair? Why did the men do these things? Why did they dress like the world? Why did they act like the world? Was it because there was no gospel, no joy, no Holy Spirit poured out upon you? Is it because they didn't have a preacher that would preach it? Oh, it's because just like it was in the days of the king, it was his own stubbornness. He hated the prophet. Because his mammy hated him. He was Jezebel's son. And that's the reason Ahab, a borderline believer. And that's why it was an old, cold, formal church he come out of. And that's the reason that he hated the prophet, because the prophet told him the truth. And he didn't pull any punches about it, and he hated him. His mother hated that prophet. His daddy hated that prophet. His daddy said when, when Jehoshaphat had come down and went down there to sit with Ahab, he said, uh, let's go up here to Ramoth Gilead and take the country up there. He said, it belongs to Israel. And, of course, he showed him all the great things that, that they had. He, of course, that's why the devil does show you all the great things, and it blinded his eyes. He said, well, our people is your people. He said, but don't you think we ought to consult the Lord about it first? He said, sure, certainly. It's awesome. But that's just right. We should. I've got 400 seminary preachers down here. The best, they have the best there is in the country. Oh, I'll go get them all. Bring them up here. And all of them prophesied with one accord. Said, go on up. Go on up. The Lord's with you. But that didn't just suit Jehoshaphat right. He said, have you got one more? One more when we got 400 out of my seminary? With one accord, everyone speaking the same thing. I don't care how many speak. If it's not the Word of God, it's not the Word of God. We got 400 smart, trained, educated prophets standing here. 
With one accord they say go. But Jehoshaphat said, but surely you got one more. He said, yeah, we got another holy... <laughs> Excuse me, I might not have always said that. But it, well, I done said it anyhow. Yeah, we got one Mike, a holy roller up here. But I hate him! <laughs> there you are. Oh, let not the king say so. Say, go up and get him and see what he'll say. He said, I'm warning you, he only prophesies evil against me. Sure, how could he do? What more could he do? One has seen it war in this heart. Could he do but stand for truth? Yeah. Went and got him. And then, of course, they had the deacon board to go get him. The whole that revival. They said, now, wait a minute. Now, don't you preach against this. And don't you preach against that. Don't tell the women they shouldn't cut their hair. And don't tell them they shouldn't wear makeup because all of our women does. I've had them say that. And I say, shut up. <laughs> you, want me, you want me here? I'll come. Okay. Now, so they said to Micah. They said, now you say the same thing the rest of them say, because one day, you know what? You'll be the general overseer. <laughs> if you'll just listen, they'll take you into the conference if you'll just agree with them. But not That don't lay in the heart of a real prophet of God. You no, know, sir. He wasn't going to agree with them. He had no strings to pull or no meal tickets to be bought. So he just said, I'll say just what God puts in my mouth to say. And that's all. So he went down there and he said, give me tonight. <clears throat> Let me see what the Lord will say. Come back the next day. You know what he said? I seen Israel on the hill scattered like sheep having no shepherd. He said, why did I tell you? And then the head of the ministerial association smacked him in the mouth. Just knocked him down flat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He said, which way the Spirit of God go when it went on me? He said, you'll see when my prophecy comes to pass. He said, put him in the inner prison. Put him back in there. And feeding the bread of sorrow and the water of sorrow. Ahab said, till I return in peace. Micah said, if you return at all, God hasn't spoke to me. Amen. Now, why would they take, why didn't they take that one man's word, see? One man in the whole nation standing out against wrong. And the rest of them, why? Because they believe the classical bunch. They believe the PhD, LLDs, and QSDs, and every kind of DDs, and all kinds of... Everything went with it. They wanted to believe it because they thought they were smarter and educated. But watch. Who was right? Michael was right. Because he stated exactly what the word of the Lord. He stated exactly. How could he bless what the word of God had cursed? How can I tell you women you're right with short hair and wearing makeup and dresses like you poured into them like a skin wiener and something like that I hear when the word of God condemns it? Why can I tell you you're right, your assemblies of God and churches of God and four squares and bringing people in, giant and coming in like that, let them act like the world and going on these all kinds of different things. When it's wrong, yeah. right, it's wrong. What we need is not a new membership, it's the power of the Holy Ghost back in the church again. Old fashioned Pentecostal revival. got enough of this stuff. The Four Square Church is one of my great sponsors. They've got some of the finest men in there, Dr. Tiford, many of those are a real godly man. But when Sister McPherson and I and Roth were sitting eating one day, he was talking about a certain organization or a certain man on this course that took most of the members. I said, that speaks pretty bad of you. Why would they go where they're going to say build four or five million dollar church? You already got yours built. Or they're to pay that debt. I said, what happened? You know what? I said, when Sister McPherson was here, she had a revival. She stayed with the Spirit. People come from everywhere. Holy Spirit filled. But what happened when she died? You started making PhDs, DDDs, double LDs, QSDs, and all kinds of things. And what's he got now? A million dollars worth of white elephant on your hand. Right. What we need is back to the Pentecostal message. Back to the Holy Ghost. That is true. Micah couldn't say no more than that because that's what Elijah said. He said, I saw... The host of heaven all gathered together having a council. And he said, who can we get to go down and deceive Ahab? In other words, to make Elijah the prophet's word come true. Get him out there so he can be killed because the dogs has got to lick his blood on the chair because Elijah said so. That was the word of God. 
God said, who can we get to do it? He said, a lying spirit come up. He said, I'll go down and get all them preachers. And <laughs> I'll make them think they're right. Why? How could he do it? How could a lying spirit get in a preacher? Because he had compromised on the Word of God. If he the Word of God, that's what he got in him. Any spirit that speaks contrary to that Word, it's a lie. That's right. That's God's year and thunder. Right. It isn't on here. It's wrong. This is it. I, God can do things that's not wrote in his book, but he's got plenty enough here for me to stay with and know that I'm right. Right here. If I just keep this, that'll be fine. Now, go tell him he's not coming off of that bed. Thus saith the Lord. He's not coming off of the bed. He's going to die on the bed, and he did. So when the messengers come back down to King Ezekiah, he said, uh, Ahab's son, so he said to him, he said, um, what are you doing back so early? He said, we met a man up there that said, uh, tell you thus saith the Lord. What did you send over there for? Is there no prophet in Israel to consult? Is not there no God down here in Israel? You have to send over there to the heathen? No one thinks enough joy in the church. Why do you stay home on Wednesday night to watch television? Is there no joy in the church no more? Nothing in your heart that longs to hear the word of God and more it likes to see we love Susie or everyone in the same heart and stay with me. What's the matter? Pastors never asked me to say this. I'm just telling you the truth. What's the matter with the church? That's exactly what's wrong. A few people say, well, our pastor, our pastor, nothing. You line up with God and you'll have to really get out. That's right. Let the church line up. That's right. Just stay with the Word. Have you lost all the joy? The gospel don't sound to you like it used to? There's something wrong with it. If that love of God isn't above everything else, that your heart, when that church bell rings, your heart just burns. Here some years ago, I was coming down a telephone pole, and I was uh, working for the public utilities while I was pastoring the Baptist Tabernacle, and and Dr. Brown's a mighty good friend of mine, belongs to a fine denomination of church there. And they say they got 500 members, but they're all over the world. Some of them have been dead for years. But So anyhow, I said that's what they had cards of. So then um, uh, I was coming down the pole, and, and I'd been down over the hill, down below New, uh, New Albany there. I went out to collect the light bill. They told me to go up there and tell them people they'd let that light bill go as long as they could. They had the red notice, and they were going to have to turn the lights off. Well, instead of going up and turn it off, I thought, gentleman-like, I'd go to the door and knock at the door and tell the lady what was going to happen. I went to the door and knocked on the door. This little old woman, girl, come across the... There was not enough clothes on to wad a shotgun. She come across... There, you know, well, you could have put them in the matchbox. Honest, I never seen a woman so thinly dressed in my life. She come to her eyes. I just turned my head. I said, how do you do? And she said, uh, and she said, oh, what did you want? I said, lady, I'm from public service company. I said, they, uh, they sent me to cut these lights off. I said, oh, she said, you know, I forgot all about it. She said, mother told me the other day to take that light bill down. And you know, I just forgot it. And it's then 10 o'clock and she wasn't out of bed. So I said, all right, you get the bill and I'll just give you a receipt of it. And we'll leave it on because we'll cut it off. It's going to cost you $2 and hook it up again. Oh, she said, thank you. And I said, all right. And she started across the, the floor, and you had that old radio on. And this year, uh, Clayton Matt Mitchell, or what, some kind of one of these years, Georgie Tomcats, Wildcats, or something. Like that. She had some kind of a, a his saw in this old fiddle, you know, going, playing that little song about five foot two and covered over with furs and all like that, you know, and all that kind of nonsense. And he was going on playing like that. And she started across the floor, and that poor thing was so possessed with that kind of a spirit. She went, tootly, tootly, I'm not saying that for a joke. I'm, I'm telling you just what's the truth. And she went around her, and she forgot I stand at the door. And then when this uh, dance man, you know, had the fiddle, he said, now all of you come out the old Greenbrier Ridge night, we're going to be out there and they're going to do the rock and roll or whatever it was. She got down, told him, and he said, bye-bye, old sweetheart, said, I'll be right there. I just stood and waited, and I thought, poor kid. It's a shame. Pretty little girl. I'll wait a little bit. She said, oh, excuse me. She said, come with the money. You know, she said, I just love to dance so well. <laughs> Putting on the dog. Now, you know it ain't dance. So she said, D-A-N-C, you don't spell dance. And, and so she said, I just love to dance so well. She said, you know what? 
she said, I just lose. I said, I noticed it. And so I just said, received it. And I said, thank you very much. And went on out. And that been a little while. I went out and got some more orders and come up. And I had a place up there where somebody went up and pushed the wires on a meter and just run it without that. And somebody in there ironed him. Well, I cut a wire across at 2300 to come through there and kill a woman dead with iron hand. So I had to go up and cut that nips off so they couldn't cut it in straight like that. So I just cut it off like that. Come down and Dr. Brown was coming down the street. He said, hello, Billy. And I said, how old was there, Dr. Brown? Well, he's a mighty fine man, a good preacher. And uh, he said, how are you doing this morning? I said, fine, fine. He said, you Baptists are really having a time up there, aren't you? I said, oh, yes, sir. We just having... He said, how do you get that there crowd you have up there every Sunday night, Billy? I said, I give them pills. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, what kind of pills? I said, gospel. <laughs> and he said, and so, oh, he said, you haven't lost any of your southern idea. I said, nope, nope, that's right. He said, you know what, Billy? He said, the other day I've got 500 members to that church down there. And he said, I sent out 500 cards to get those people to pledge that they would come six months out of the year to Sunday school. Within the year, they'd register six times. Uh, in, in, uh, they'd register six months in the year they'd come and said you know how many answered and I said don't have any idea brother Brown hey, he was a nice man yes sir I believe a real true man and I said I don't believe he had the Holy Ghost no sir I don't but I mean I believe what he, what he preached he believed and he was true as far as he went like the color man eating watermelon he said he just lied and said what about that Moses he said that was good but he said Moab and <laughs> And that's just about the way it is, you see. So that part was all right as far as he went. But he didn't go too far. So then I said, uh, uh, how many answered, uh, Brother Brown? He said, two answered last Sunday. He said, what do you think about that? I said, well, that's pretty bad, Brother Brown. I said, you know what, Brother Brown? I'll tell you a little something happened a while ago. I said, I was down New Albany. I was in Jeffersonville then. I said, I was down New Albany. just three miles below and I said, I was cutting off the service down there for a person that didn't pay their bill. I went up and knocked on the door and I told him about the girl. And I said, that girl, she was so carried away, she went across the floor after speaking to me. And that music had such an effect on her that she went across the floor going tootly, tootly, tootly. And, and throwed a kiss to that Clayton Matt Mitchell, or what his name was, on that green bar patch or everybody was going to be out there. I said, do you think that... Somebody will have to sign a card to get her to go there Saturday night. He said, well, no. I said, she'd palm what that few clothes she had on her. She'd get there. That's right. Why? I said, because in her was a dance spirit. Now, I said, now, Brother Brown, you excuse my ignorance, and don't think that I'm trying to tell you something, but I want to tell you something right now. See? I said, the, if damn people... Love God like that woman loved dancing, they'd be at the church, you wouldn't have to sign any card to get in there. And that's where it is, brother. The church has lost its zeal, its love for the gospel, for the power, for the Holy Ghost. It's lost it. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no position there? Then why is it? daughter of my people not recovered. It reminds me like a, a man dying on the doctor's doorstep when the doctor has the remedy for his disease. Same thing. Right? If a man's got a disease and a doctor's got a toxin for that disease and the man comes up and he refuses to take the doctor's um, uh, medicine, then if the man dies right on the doctor's doorstep, can you blame the doctor? Can you blame the toxin? Who's to blame? Himself. That's right. Can't blame the doctor. He's got the toxin. He's willing to give it. Can't blame the toxin. Science has found it for the disease. So he dies right on the doorstep. But don't blame the doctor. It's exactly right. Just the same thing today. People are dying right in the pews and sin. It's not because we haven't got toxins. It isn't because we haven't got physicians. It's because the people don't want to take it. And think that he can fix your arm up. It's a dangerous thing not to do that. You should do it. It's dangerous if you don't do it. And there was a time we didn't have much toxins. 
People die with diphtheria, but they got a toxin for it. Polio, the salt toxin, that, that's fine. I, I sure appreciate that. I believe a man to be more humble. You say, Brother Brandon, you believe in divine healing? That's all divine healing. Every bit of it's divine healing. I'm the Lord who heals all that disease. Yeah. Every bit of it's divine healing. If hospitals and stuff like that is not the... Tell me where there ever was one doctor that could heal a disease, or tell me where they got a medicine that would heal a disease. I was interviewed at Mayo's, you've seen it in the Reader's Digest, and so forth. Donnie Martin was healed up here. They called me in. They said, we don't claim to be healers, Mr. Branham. We only claim to assist nature. There's one healer, that's God. Sure. I was preaching on that one time. Somebody said, what about penicillin, Brother Branham, and for the, for the, a, a bad cold? I said, well, it's just like you had your house full of rats, and you put out poison, kill the rats. That don't patch the holes. I said, penicillin only kills the germs. It don't pull a bill back to blood cells and things. God's the only creator that can create blood cells and, and calcium and so The doctor sets the arm. He don't heal it. What if I cranked my car and broke my arm? When he said, doctor, heal my arm, I quick, I finished cranking my car. See, he can't heal it. He just sets it together while God heals it. He's fine. He just assists nature. God's the healer. So it's only, there's a remedy. And that's good. And if you don't take those remedies, then... It's dangerous. Well, you say you believe in divine healing? Well, listen, brother. Constantly, I pray every day and night for to find something for cancer. Look at the poor people. Anything, no good thing can come unless it's from God. That's right. What would we do today if we didn't have those places? I know when I first started out amongst the Pentecostal people, they, they some shut behind the door to me. But you see what God did. He just moved out on over. He loves them. He said, I'm going anyhow. He healed just the same, so it don't take any, make any difference. <laughs> yes, sure. All healing is of God. I'm the Lord who heals all thy diseases. I've said it many times. What if I cut my hand here? They ain't got a medicine in the world can heal that knife cut. Not a one. Could heal a knife cut there, heal a knife cut my colder on this desk. You said it wasn't made for your cold or death. It was made for your hand. All right. I have a knife cut on my hand. It's all dead. They take me off down to the morgue and, and bomb my body with a fluid that makes me look natural for 50 years. They give me a shot of penicillin every day. They put my phylate and my cure cone. They sew it up. The doctors come from Germany. and They give me steam baths and whatever more they want to. That cut will be just exactly like it was when it was cut 50 years ago. Now, if medicine heals the human body, why don't it heal it? Well, you say you ain't got no life. Then medicine isn't a healer. Life is a healer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then tell me what life is. I'll tell you who God is. God is life. Exactly right. Now, medicine, so much far it's dangerous to take. But, oh, you might get by with not taking the doctor's toxin, but you can't get by without God's toxin, his bomb. Can't do it. It'll, it. You sure can't do it. And then how do they find toxins? Well, some science reads up a whole lot of stuff and they boil it together and put it in test tubes and so forth and boil it. After a while, when they get out to the think they got it, they shoot it in the guinea pig. And if he survives it, then they shoot it in you. <laughs> and you know, medicine will kill some people and help some others. Penicillin can kill as many as it's helped about. That's right. I was reading the other day where a nurse takes penicillin for the last 15 years or more and she took a dose and killed her instantly. See? Now, you see, it'll kill some and it'll help the others because all people are not made like guinea pigs. So, you see, that's, that, that's the reason it helps some and, and, and kills the others. That's right. But God's toxin helps all. It's a cure. It's not a remedy. It's a cure. Amen. Right. They say number one killer is heart trouble. Uh-uh. I, I differ with you. Number one killer is sin trouble. Unbelief. That's number one killer. Oh, yeah. You know, people say, I just can't quit smoking. I just can't quit man saying, I've been untrue to my wife, Brother Bram, but I just can't quit it. One woman's not enough for me. And the other one woman said, oh, I don't know, Brother Branham. I have just started when I was a young girl to run around. I just can't quit. This is breaking up my home. I, you know what? It's just because you didn't try the toxin. That's all. You just refused to take it. We got the stuff that kills that. We got the stuff that makes you live decent in your life. Amen. We got the thing that takes the desire of cigarettes out of you. We got the stuff that takes sin out of you. But you refuse to take it, that's all. You just won't try the talk scene. You're afraid of your social standing, afraid of that new birth. 
You know, the new verse why people want to dodge, you want to dodge the issue. So the devil patches it up that when you believe, that's when you're born again. That's not right. Listen, any birth, as I said before, any birth is a mess. I don't care where it's at. If it's in the pig pen, it's a mess. A mess of pigs being born out there. It's a horrible thing. If it's out in the field when a calf's born, it's a horrible thing. Nasty mess. If it's out in the pink decorated hospital room, it's still a mess. And the new birth is a mess. But you have to have that messy thing to bring forth new life. Amen. That's what the mass of people do. They're afraid to wash some of the paint off their face to make them straighten up. They got the toxin, but you don't want to take it. God's going to ask you, why someday didn't you do it? Why didn't you? There's toxin, there's bombing, Gillian. There's physicians there. But the reason is because the people don't want to subscribe to this position. They want an aspirin instead. <laughs> they don't want to diagnose the case. When you go into a doctor and blame, I'm sick, my stomach's hurting, my head's hurting, he wants to get rid of you. Well, the first thing you do, he'll give you a little farmer's got some aspirin in it and send you out. That's not a doctor. He's trying to get rid of you. A real doctor will examine that case till he finds a reason. And then start to work from there. See, we get a many outfall from these services, so-called healing services. You get down there in the line, watch that discernment. You reach down and find that thing until it finds the cause of it. When you find the cause, here's what it is. You're doing this, you're doing that. Immoral living and things. People come into the platform. You've seen it in the meetings, haven't you? Raise your hands if you've seen the Holy Spirit discern those things and call them sins out. Men are living on to their wives and things like that. Has it ever failed? It's always the truth. You've got, you can pour oil on their head and stone them hollered, have shivers and chills and everything else. That devil will lay right there. Because he's got a right to stay there until you confess that sin and make it right and let the Holy Ghost come in. Hallelujah. That's the Pentecost. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Sure there is. But the people don't want the medicine. They don't want God's toxin. That's all. Oh, yes, it, it, um, it's bombing, Gilead, and it's the physician there, but the people don't want to listen to the physician. Mm-hmm. Afraid of the new birth. There was a time when the, the toxin, even for sin, wasn't too straight because it was of lambs and doves and cattle and so forth. But better now. It's had some difference. You know, as I said, when doctors want to try their toxin, they squirt it into a guinea pig and see how he acts. But you know, when God brought his toxin down, he didn't put it in the guinea pig, he put it in his son, himself. He made himself a body. You believe that? He overshadowed the Virgin Mary and created himself a body. Changed his cast from God Jehovah to a man here on earth to express himself to a body. And he didn't give it to a guinea pig. Now I want to straighten some of this here social doctoring out that they call that he was just a prophet. He never give it to a prophet. He give it to himself. Any good doctor will try his own medicine out see if it works. Jesus give it to himself. He was baptized on the Jordan with the Holy Ghost. John Bear records seen the Spirit of God like a dove descending upon him. A voice saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am pleased to dwell in. They watched it. When he was tempted, the toxin helped. When he was smitten in the face, it helped. When he was riled up on him, it spoke not back. When it put a rag around his head and hit him on the head with a six foot of pure prophet. Now I tell us who hit him. The toxin helped. When they pulled beard out of his face and spit in his face and drunken soldiers honked and spit in his face and pulled handfuls of beard, it helped. On Calvary it helped. Hallelujah. In the hour of death it helped. When he died it helped. When his soul was sent into hell it helped. But on Easter morning it proved it was God. The toxin he gives is eternal life. How can he keep it in hell? How can he keep it anywhere else? The gates of hell, death through the grave couldn't hold it. He rose up again on the third day, proved that the toxin was real. 
standing. He rose. Oh, when they see him rise up, the prophets died and was buried. But Jesus rose again. God's toxin, he came down like a dove from above, lit up on his own son, and he lived a life peaceful. What about not being a showman, a big stiff shirt somewhere, stuffed out, see what I can do? He hid himself and restrained and come back from the people and so forth. Was called everything that could be called and he ministered right on to the humble, the sick, the prostitutes and everything that there was. It helped. Every temptation helped. And in death it helped. In life it helped. In death it helped. And it proved in resurrection that it was eternal life. That's God's own life. The word eternal comes from the Greek word of Zoe, which means God's own life is in him. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, it's eternal life, and God's own life is in you. You can more die than God can. He separated himself. When he come down the day of Pentecost and separated himself, tongues of fire, that pillar of fire scattered out all through the church and set upon each of them. God dividing himself among his church. Boy, at that day, you know what happened to the Father, the Father, and me, and I, and you. Hey, man, that's Pentecost. That's a real blessing. The toxin hell. Yes. What happened? After this, all of them seen that that was that same Jesus. Thomas said, I've got to put my hand in his hand, and in his side. He did it, says, my God, my Lord and my God. The rest of them see it, they believe it. He said, would you like to be inoculated, fellas? He said, yes, I want some inoculation too, because I want to rise up to it the last day. So I'll tell you what you do. You go on up to the city of Jerusalem and quit your preaching, quit your singing, quit your testifying, but go up there to the city of Jerusalem and wait for a little thing down the whole back of it from heaven. <laughs> and when it come, it wasn't a, a preacher saying, now stand up and we'll come to the altar and sprinkle with a salt shake and so forth. Or a priest come up the road with his collar turned around and say, lick out your tongue, we'll take the Holy Eucharist and he drinks the wine. They substituted all those things. That's doctor the man. But when he sent the top scene down, there all of a sudden came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And God a knocking laid at 120. Top scene come into them. Eternal life. A bunch of cowards. They wasn't cowards any longer. They went through windows, doors, and everything else. Out into the streets and was staggering. Listen, my Catholic sister. The Blessed Virgin Mary was with them. And her being the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if God would not let her come to heaven until she went up and got the Holy Ghost and acted like the rest of them, staggered like she was drunk, how are you going to get to heaven anything less than that? Think of that. You Methodist woman, if they told you belong to the card party and you Baptist has been baptized in modern things, that settles it. You Church of so called Church of Christ and the rest of it, you Adventists with the seventh day, you Pentecostals just joining the denomination. How are you going to get to heaven anything less than the baptism of the Holy Ghost? How are you going to be if you're not inoculated? You better have the same thing. Right? Yes. They was all staggering like drunk men. The light, the stand out life, and I'm saying these men are full of new wine. Finally, there was a little preacher stood up on a soapbox or a stump. Didn't have no education, couldn't write his name. He hadn't been in some of our schools. But he said, You men of Judea, and you that dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. These are not drunk as you suppose to stir thy grave, but this is that. Amen. Brother, if this ain't that, I'll just keep this to that come. <laughs> What happened? They were picked in their heart. And they said, man and brother, how do we get inoculated? Is there any more bomb in Gilead? Is there any physician there? Yeah, they had plenty of bombs. They had a physician. Would you like to know what his name was? They called him Dr. Simon Peter. <laughs> yeah, we got a physician here. I'll tell you the truth. He's got the keys to the kingdom. He's got a physician. We got plenty of bombs. What can we do? And Peter stand up in the midst of them, said to them, I'll write you a prescription. And it'll be for you and to your children. 
and his name is far off. And even as the many as the Lord our God shall call, it will be an eternal prescription. <laughs> and he said, repent, every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises to you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. How long does this description will last? As long as God's calling. Still same Holy Ghost. Now what it is, if your doctor writes you a prescription, and you better take it to the right druggist, because you take some quack druggist that don't diagnose that prescription just right, he could kill the patient. <laughs> I don't think that's what's happened. We've got too many old dead formal churches. They ain't using prescriptions. <laughs> that sounds rank, but it's true. Now that doctor diagnoses the case, he knows just what it takes, so much poison to kill a germ, so much antidote to upset the poison, keep it from killing you. See? And if you take all the poison out of it, then what will it do? Your patient won't help him a bit. If you take all the antidote out, you'll kill your patient by poison. So you better have a real druggist that knows how to read that prescription to tell you what to do. Don't tamper with that prescription. And what's the matter today? There's been too many people tampering with it. Leave it just the way it is. And take the medicine. Hallelujah. Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, cold form of Pentecostals. Rest of you. There's bomb in Gilead. And there's possession here. Hallelujah. What's the matter? There's plenty of it that'll explode every sin and every sin. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Sure there is. There's your physicians there? Plenty of them. They'll teach it just the way she's wrote there. Not just come up and take your letter and say, I changed it from the Methodist over to the Baptist. Oh, my. Stand up and take a salt shake and throw a few salt shakes of water on you like that and say, it's all over, brother. Give the right hand of fellowship and six months probation. Nonsense. <laughs> Peter said, repent every one of you. Repent, turn it out. That's right. Well, you see, but Brother Graham and I took my letter over. I asked them that about this. I read it in the Bible. But they said, oh, that was long ago. They don't have that no more. What did the doctor say? He said, the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to who? Every creature. Every creature. How far all the world they never reached it yet? How long is the last all the world? What will take place? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues. If they should take up a serpent or drink a deadly thing, it wouldn't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. We've got bomb in Gilead. We've got physicians. But the people are just refusing to take it. God is going to ask why. Why did you the day of the judgment? Now, we poured out the medicine this week as hard as I know how to pour it out. And as straight as I know how to bring it. Now, if you don't receive it, then God's going to say, why? Someday the Bible's going to lay closed on the pulpit. The preacher's going to play his, pray his last prayer. The taps will die out from the bugle, and the sun will set its last time over the hill. Then God's going to ask you to give a reason. When the ones that rejects the message is going to be asked to give a reason, what then? What then? What then? When that great book is open, what then? When the ones that reject this message tonight is going to be asked to give a reason, what then? You've attended this revival. God has done everything that's in the book for you. 
driven and bound and given. People have received the Holy Ghost. They've been filled with God's Spirit. Young and old, they have repented of their sins. They've got joy in their heart. We've seen divine healing take place. People with heart trouble and different diseases heal. We've seen the angel of God come down, go through the building. It's like he said just before the coming of the Lord would be, discerning the spirits and things like that. Prophetic utterances went forth. People spoke in tongues and prophesied and vindicated the word back and forth. You've seen it and said. What you choose tonight, Hollywood or Holy Heaven? You're going to be asked to give a reason someday. What then? One time there's an old woman here in the country. She was dying. She was starving to death. Poverty stricken. So someone turned her in to the authorities, the charity. And they went to this woman and they said to her, We come to investigate your case and we want to know what's, what's wrong. I said, Haven't you no relation? She said, I have a lovely son. I said, where? I said, He's a businessman. Where is he? He's in India. Well, she said, uh, oh, is he a businessman? said, yes. So I said, why don't he send you something? said, how long has he been over there? said, about 10 years. said, oh, he's a very prosperous businessman. said, well, why don't he help you? said, I just can't ask him. I just can't do it. He's such a sweet boy. said, I just can't ask him for it. And said, I'll write him letters. And he writes me the sweetest letters that any boy could write his mother and tells me how much he loves me. But said, I just couldn't ask him for it. And said, well, you are to tell him. said, I just can't do it. Tell my own son that I'm poverty stricken and thinks I just couldn't do it. But said, he sends me the prettiest pictures I've ever seen in my life. And said, well, what kind of pictures? said, oh, pretty little pictures about that big square. said, let's see one. said, where you got them at? She said, I keep them in my Bible. So across the floor went the old mother and she picked up her Bible and began to lay them out. Lay them out. The investigator looked at him. He was a rich woman. What were they? They were bank drafts from India. They had pretty pictures on them. Where did she find them? In her Bible. She was rich and didn't know it. Where did she find it at? In her Bible. You don't have to act like the world. You don't have to go all bound down. You're rich. Where do you find it at in the Bible? You just looked it over and thought it was just a picture book or some other true story. But it isn't. It's God's Word. You are rich. I'm the child of a king. I'm the child of a king. With Jesus my Savior. I Father is rich with houses and land. He holds us the wealth of the world in his hand. Of rubies and diamonds, of silver and gold, his coffers are full. He has riches untold. Sing it. I'm a child of the King. A child of the King. With Jesus I'm a child of the King. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no position there? Then why does my church still act the way they do? Why does my church continually get away from me? Is it because there's no bomb in Gilead? Because there's no position to diagnose their case and let them know that they're wrong? No, we got positions. We got bombs, but the people don't want it. I first started to land it on to the pastors, but I come to find out no matter how much I preach it, they don't move anyhow. Might not be the pastors, it might be the congregation. 
Right. You want it. There's a bomb in Gilead. How many would like to come to the great physician tonight, have all your sins moved from you, and have joy unspeakable and full of glory in your heart? Would you raise up your hand and say, pray for me, Brother Branham. God bless you, lady over here. God bless you, young man. God bless you back there. God bless you up in there. That's very fine. Oh, sure. God bless you over here, sir. Up in the balcony, would you want the great visit? God bless you. Yes, sir. I see your hand over to my right. What, and this lady here, God bless you, young lady. Great decision to make. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Then why is my people still weighed and seeing? Why are they still moping around for the things of the world? Isn't there enough satisfaction in my gospel to take care of every longing that they have? Is there enough joy when they receive me? Don't I give them enough joy and love that it take all the love of the world out of them? I said, you know, if you love the world or the things of the world, the love of Father is not in you. Is there enough joy in the serving God to take you away from the things of the world? Then why isn't the daughter of my people recovered from their sin sickness? Would there be another before we pray? Raise your hand. Say, pray for me, Brother Brown. God bless you back there, lady. Oh, that's wonderful. Seven or eight hands. There's one up. Is there some more? Say, pray for me, Brother Branham. I, I want the bomb of Gilead. There is a bomb in Gilead. Would there be someone else who would like to be in, have the toxin of the Holy Spirit brought into your soul? Would you just raise your hand and say, God, inoculate me tonight from the things of the world and inoculate me from all my unbelief that I can have faith to stand out like a real Christian. Raise up your hand, would you? God bless you, sir. God bless you, young man sitting here. God bless you back there, my friend. God bless you, brother. Here, that's good. Inoculate me, Lord, from the things of the world. I thought I couldn't give them up, but really I never have touched your toxin yet. I'd like to have it, Father. Just let the Holy Spirit come and inoculate my soul from all the cares of the world. Remember me in prayer, Brother Branham. I'm raising my hand because I believe. God bless this young woman sitting right here. God bless this over here, yes, young brother. God bless you. That's good. All right. Right over here, yes. The Lord bless, yes. Right over in the corner, I got two. Yeah, the Lord sees your hand. Let's pray together now. Heavenly Father, simply and lovingly we come to the fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, where sinners plunge beneath the flood and lose all their guilty stains. They raise their hand, Father, because of that they believe. And we know that they are a spirit in their heart. And then the Holy Spirit came up to them and said, You're wrong. You're wrong. Why don't you accept me tonight? And they said, Yes, Lord. And they raised up their hands. Now you said in John 5, 24, He that heareth my word, and Lord, the best of my knowledge I've preached, he that heareth my word and conjunction, believeth on him that sent me, hath present in everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation at the judgment, but pass from death to life. Yes. Father, I, I lay that before you, that's your word. You said heavens and earth will pass away, but my word will not. You said no man can come to me except my Father draws me first, and all the Father has given me will come to me. Now we're taught in the Bible, as many as believed was added to the church. Now, Father, in an act of faith, I place these people who raise their hands into the church of the living God by a confession of faith that they are your children from tonight on. And now, Father, they have come to the doctor's office. They are inside the door now, and they want to come up to the great physician to have the Holy Spirit given to them, the inoculation, the bomb, that will keep them from the things of the world. You said, after you have believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I pray, God, that they'll get that Holy Spirit of promise since they become your children. Grant it. Now, while we have our heads bowed, I'm going to ask each one that raised their hands just to stand up a moment for a word of prayer. Everyone that raised your hands, I, I don't believe you did that just for the fun of it. I believe you really meant it before God in a meeting like this. Stand up. That's right. Stand up to your feet. 
Everywhere, up in the balcony, wherever you are, stand up to your feet. This time. God bless you. That's good. Just stand to your feet just a minute. Out in the hall. You just stand to your feet. Say, I, I make that confession myself. There's many are standing now. Now, my, my loving newborn brothers and sisters, I, I think of the vision that I saw. Someday over in the land, I wish I could just walk out there now, put my arms around you and hug you. It, it couldn't be so in this human life. I couldn't do that. But just across the border someday I will. You'll be so glad. I'll be so glad when I see you and you see me and we'll be real brothers and sisters then. We got just a little touch of it. Now, now listen, I'm going to tell you what God said. God said, no man can come to me except my Father draws him first. And all that the Father has given me will come to me. Now, you come because you know you're not worthy of coming. But you come because it's something in your heart told you that you was wrong and you don't want to be wrong no more. That's true confession. Now, the Bible said this, He that will confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father and the Holy Angel. Now, clergyman, is that what Jesus said? He said that. Now, what have you done? You stood up here before at least 600 people or maybe more in this building tonight. To make a testimony, I'm wrong, and I do accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Uh, if something spoke to my heart and said, this is the night for you. So I stand up because that I make a witness that I'm wrong. I want to stand here to be a witness of Christ. Now, Christ will make a witness of you, and he said, I will testify of you before the Father and the holy angels. Now, while you are standing the way you are, I want you, each one, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and on Calvary, when those black clouds were floating over the cross, lightning was flashing, Jesus dying, thirsting, crying, God was pouring out his fierce wrath upon Jesus, and he took it for your place. Do you freely believe that to be true, that he took it in your place? And you now will accept his pardon, not how you feel, but what you believe, that, that he did that for you. If you'll accept it and say, Lord, I can't do a thing, I, I'm just an awful sinner, but I do accept your pardon for me. I, I'm accepting that you died in my place. I believe that with all my heart. Raise up your hand. You just, and That's good. Everyone. Everyone. Now, as far as I know, in the scripture, that's all I have to go by, you are saved from, you'll never come to judgment but pass from death into life. Now, I want you Christians that standing here, these people that are standing up, I want you to raise your head and look. I want you to shake your hands and say, God bless you, my brother and sister. Welcome into the kingdom of God. Just turn and shake your hands. That's right. Welcome, my Christian brother and sister. That's right. I see women hugging one another and saying, just wonderful. Welcome into the kingdom of God. I want you now to find some good full gospel church. Let some man baptize you in Christian baptism. Man, seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, that inoculates you from the very thing that condemns you tonight. You just pass on above it. See, inoculation keeps you from the disease. Inoculation of the Holy Spirit gives you power to overcome all the temptations of the world. Is that right, person? It's the, it's the bomb. It's the bomb of the inoculation. That you say, I, I tried, Brother Branham. But, but I fail. But you see, it's not what you do. It's what he done for you. It's not what you are. It's what he is. You believe him. Now, let this come to him. Trust him as your physician. And let him inoculate you now from temptations of the... Now, you'll be tempted, of course. But a good, strong plant don't have to be sprayed. It's strong and powerful. Its resistance throws off the evil parasite. And that's why a good, strong Christian, he can overcome all temptations. Because it overthrows all the things of the world. The woman can say, come on, dear. You ain't going to be old-fashioned. Now you're going to dance. I found a pearl of great price. Now you know you're going to smoke again. No, sir. I found something so much greater. Oh, it's so much greater. God bless you. Now you may be seated. And God be with you. I pray that after the prayer line, that you'll make your way to the altar of God and will still be filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. I pray that God our Father will grant 
that to you. Mm. Isn't he wonderful? Now, when we do that, the great Holy Spirit here, while I was watching out over the audience, I could just, I just know we're going to have a great prayer meeting for the sick. Before we call that, let's just have, how many doesn't have a prayer card? I don't want anyone a prayer card because I'm going to pray for you here. Ones without prayer cards is sick. Raise up your hand. All right? I just hold your hand so I can just look around. Hold your hands up in this district. Here's the ladies right here. Just put your hand down there. Yeah. You don't have any prayer cards. Well, so that the um, newborn babes would know that this spirit that's been preaching wasn't me, it was him. See? So let him know. Now, I want you to look at me and believe me as his servant. Did you do that? Could Jesus look out upon the, the audience and, and believe with all their heart that God could heal the sick? Do you believe that? All right, what if I told you that your trouble was over? Your kidney trouble, your gallbladder trouble, and anything passed through you, and you're made way. Now raise your hand if that's right. All right, I just go and believe and that's the case. Be made way. If thou canst believe. Do you believe with all your heart now? All right, over in this side. There's a colored woman with her hand up. What do you think, sister? Do you believe me to be God's prophet or his servant? I think I have enough favor with the crowd to say prophet. Uh, all right. You believe me to be his prophet. You're an Ethiopian woman. I'm an Anglo-Saxon man. Like Jesus met the woman at the well. Talk to her just a moment. Now, if Jesus will let me know your trouble, will you believe it's the same spirit was up on him as one is up on me? You will. Then your high blood pressure will leave you. Do you believe? Have faith, don't doubt. Just believe with all your heart. Have faith and don't doubt. Now I'll turn my back. You pray. A lady appears before me. She's sitting in this direction. She's suffering with bursitis. Stand up. Her name is Miss Hart. Stand up. Have you got a prayer card? No, you don't. You don't need it. You touched something, didn't you? <laughs> Do you believe with all your heart? Now, how many knows that Jesus Christ said that same spirit would be here? How many knows that that was the sign of the Messiah when Jesus was on earth? How many knows he promised it to the elected church in the last days? Well, here it is. Now you see new converts. After 2,000 years, it's never happened in 2,000 years because the evening lights are shining. The Bible said there would come a day that wouldn't be neither day nor night, but in the evening time, it would be light. Mm -hmm. There he is. Now what kind of light would it be? The same sun that rolls in the east sets in the west. Is that right? The evening light has come. You believe that? Now, how many have a prayer call? Let's see your hand. Oh, it's, I guess close to 100. Now, where's my son? What prayer call did you get out to? See, from 1 to, up to 50. From 1 to 50. Who has prayer card number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Let them stand up first right here. One, two, what's that? One, two, three, four, five. I see them. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let them come. Line up right here. The boy will line you up. Just come according to your number. Ten. It'll be hard to shake them out of knowing now. 
and started to keep moving out over the island. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Just come as I call, if you will. Come right around this way and go right back in the line there. Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, Thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. Uh, how about you always catching a line right here from thirty-three right here, and then they can catch in on that line back there. Thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. Just right here when the end of that line comes, they catch right in on. Forty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty. gospel businessman is here. I would like to have a few of those books. Uh, with that, that uh, Brother Tommy Hicks, if you're here, you wrote a nice part of that. That's very nice. Is this a little more to it? But you made it just wonderful. I appreciate it. I'd like to have some for my friends. I'll buy them. Maybe uh, three, four, five hundred of them. <coughs> Now, instead of saying, now, let's say now, I believe. Do you believe now? Yeah. You know, Jesus, right at the end of the, right at the end of his ministry, his disciples couldn't understand him. No one understood him. How know how that? How many know that they couldn't understand him? Sure. Why? They thought he had a dual personality. No. Sometimes it was Jesus talking. Sometimes it was the Father in him talking. See? See? That was it. The man. So Jesus said, right, they said, now we believe, now we believe that you know all things and no man needs to teach you. We, Jesus said, do you now believe? <laughs> Let's sing it now, I believe, Lord. You've done enough. You give us the Holy Ghost. You give us speaking in tongues. Now, how many Pentecostals are here? Let's see your hands. All right. Now, don't the Bible say Paul said, the great Paul said, if there be, if all of you speak with tongues, and the unlearned come in, and, and you all speak with tongues, you'll say you're mad. But if one be a prophet and will reveal the secret of the heart, then they'll fall down and say, truly, God's with you. Is that right? Amen. Just advancing Pentecost. Come on. See? Don't get out of the trend of the world. Stay Pentecost. All you Methodists in here. How many in here was formerly Methodists? Let's see your hands. How many were Baptists? Hold your hand. How many were Presbyterians? Hold your hand. How many were Catholic? Hold your hand. I have to tell you, friend, I come from a Catholic family, too. I'm an Irishman. That's right. A Catholic interview with some priests the other day, not, not the other day, quite a while ago, they said, if this is of God, all true gifts come back to the Mother Church. I said... I've been back to Mother Church ever since I received the Holy Ghost. I said, you mean the mother of organizations, not the Mother Church we're born into it. Not joined into it, born into it. All right. Now I believe. You've done enough, Lord. I believe now.
change is saying, now I receive. Put one hand on your heart, the other up to God. Now. There is a bomb in Gilead. Do you receive it? together, and all, he said, after this manner, you must pray all together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thine will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses. As we forgive those that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You say, why did you do that, Brother Branham? In the prayer, it said, after this manner, everything's been done. What did you say in there? Deliver us from evil. All unbelief. All sickness. All diseases. All afflictions. All superstitions. Everything. Deliver us from evil. Now you know I couldn't go down that line with the Germans. I'd, I'd pass completely out before I got halfway down now, tomorrow night, we're going to have the German line down at the other place. Tonight, we're going to pray for these people. How many of you in that line there are now solemnly, you see that, how, I want to ask you to talk about a miracle. How would a man, a human being like me, know those things? I couldn't do it. How many of you believe that that's the very thing that our Lord Jesus did? You do it? Well, then, that anointing that I've told you about and preached to you the truth, now, Jesus has come down and proved that's true. Is that right? Yes. Then he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Is that right? Yes. Now, that makes me a believer. Is that right? Yes. Now, what he said would be the believer, if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that right? I want to show you something. Pastor, evangelist, missionary, how many of you all are believers? See? Now I'm going to ask as many of you all that can come right down here with me. See? I, I, not let the evangelists have everything to do. The people, I don't want you to have your faith built into an evangelist. I want you to have your faith built in your own pastor. He's the man who's going to lead you from here out. See? And these men, come down on some of you, brothers. Come down here to form a double line. Huh? Yeah, a double line. These men are men of God that believe. I'm going to stand right in the middle of them. And we're going to pray. How many out there is going to be praying for them too out there? Pull up your hand. Remember, there's somebody's mother. There's somebody's father. There's somebody's darling. Somebody's child. Is that right? Well, what if it was you? What if it was your mother? What if it was your child? What if it was your sister, your wife, your husband? You want somebody to be sincere, wouldn't you? Now, we're going to pray. And all these men of God, come right along here, brothers. Just, just come right down this way and form a double line. You know what? I'm going to tell you, it makes me proud in my heart and grateful to find servants of God that will stand before the people and say, I'm a witness of this gospel to you. Aren't you proud of your pastors? Say praise the Lord if you're proud of these pastors. We're proud of our brothers. Amen. 
We're proud of them. They are your pastors. A pastor means a shepherd. These, each of these men has just as much of anointing to lay hands on the sick as I do. Now, I'm not a preacher. They're a preacher. They've got a higher office than I have. Mine's a prophetic office. That's a prophesy. Now, they're not, they wasn't built for that. They wasn't ordained for that. But what does the Bible say? God has set in the church apostles, that's missionaries, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Is that right? Yes. Then gifts ordained of God and anointed. Now, I have no education. That's the reason I say I'm not a preacher. These men could take this word and they wouldn't have to use one of these gifts. They could just lay that word out there so they'd tie Satan in such a knot he couldn't get out of it. See? But I can't do that. That's not my calling. They are called for that. Now, but they're, they're a man of God. Every man that's called of God is commissioned to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. How many believe that? Then how are you going to fail from getting well passing through an ark like this? Did you ever notice how Solomon built his temple? Listen close. When you entered into the door, what happened? There was angels carved out of olive wood with their wings tipping across that every worshiper coming to the holy seat come right down across the tips of these angels' wings, right down to the mercy seat, right down to the altar. You know the order of Solomon's temple? Well, what is an angel? A messenger. Get the dictionary and find out what an angel means. Some of them heavenly messengers, some of them earthly messengers that God dwells in to bring his earthly message. And these are messengers, angels of the Lord, messengers to you. And they're standing there with their hands out to obey what God says. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It has to happen. Do you believe that ever will be coming to? Now, on the organ there, only believe that every person in here bow your head. And as these people walk to the line, we'll lay hands on them for their healing. Everybody pray and every minister touch them as they go by. Our Heavenly Father, we bring to you this great line of people. They're sick, Lord. I pray that you'll heal every one of them as they pass by. Under the anointing of these servants of yours, may they go through this line and every one be completely healed.
Put your hands over on one another now. Ah, uh, this is the time for you to... Your baby. Hey, God. Oh, yeah. 